Hey, everybody. <clears throat> uh, we're going to look at something this morning, my morning, that is somewhat undefined. And it has to do with, I want to say how professionals think, but not in the way we might think. Okay, so here's an argument I had with uh, Jujo, Jujo Jang, professional nine don. He had hero status in the late seventies in the Japan China Games. Uh, super strong uh, husband to Runei Wei, first ever professional nine don woman. Okay, so I stayed with him for a while, and this is an argument we had. Arguments of too big as a word, but here we go. Okay, in this position, <clears throat> I say black is weak. It's three to one against black A. If black doesn't defend, if black plays away, white's going to have, white's going to get stuff accomplished. Why? Because it's three to one in white's favor. So I mentioned this to Jujo. He says, no, black's not weak. He says, white's the one that's weak. I say, well, obviously white's weak in general, but, and this is, I'm talking here, white's weak in general, but locally, black's the one that's weak. He says, I don't think so. I'm like, okay, so, and if black ignores, why would black ignore? Black can attack here. So I'm like, okay, so there's a there's things they feel passionate about, and this is true for all people, where they have a certain perspective, and they don't want to look outside that perspective because their perspective is so valid and so good. Why would they look elsewhere? I'm more the type that likes to segment. Uh, what does, what's the definition of this part? What's the definition of that part? How do we look at it in this perspective? How do we look at it in this other perspective? So we had this argument and we never got through to it <clears throat> other than me saying, well, of course, white's weak here. There's yeah, we can attack white. No problem. And no reason to, uh, to look at the details other than someone might want to do it um, a lot of q players will do it this way and it's like yeah but for instance now black's behind enemy lines i've won so many nine stone games this way i played countless nine stone games so maybe they'll run this way well that's kind of slow you know, we can do things like, uh, and again, there's no reason for me to be sharing all this. I'm just doing it because I can't not do it. So white's getting a great deal and black has accomplished very little. And even later, that's not even an, an eye yet. So there's, you know, lots to accomplish here. So the way to get past all this is to just shoulder hit. Now black is completely out of danger. White cannot get out or with any success and the basic pattern not that i should be showing this at this point black's a group is not about to get surrounded but notice the b group if white it's if white honeys white's using that extra stone the c stone so break that connection then defend that's the pattern and then there's no cut or anything and black's completely in control of course black doesn't own the territory on the left but that's a whole nother thing 
Okay, let's look at another one. This time with uh, Feng Yun, someone else I studied with for a long time. Let me get rid of the handicap stones. Um, oh, haven't done it yet. Get rid of that one. Then we put in the position, which was... Block, block, let's put it here and here. Okay, the right is the biggest place. Not only that, but that's where white chooses to play. I say that because this is a perfectly valid move, even though it's not in the biggest area of the board. There's biggest theoretically, and then there's moves that are certainly big enough that no one can prove wrong other than perhaps AlphaGo. Okay, so on the right, let's look at A versus B. Which one's bigger? B's bigger. Why? Because on the right, <clears throat> black has a two stone wall. And on the bottom, it's just a four, four. So let's look at a four, four extension. And we're going to look at that extension on the bottom. Is that big? Yeah. What makes it big? Well, the 4-4 likes to extend along the bottom. You can also play corner, like a knight's move, long knight's move, but of course, this is the big move. And that's as far as we go, because if we go one further, uh, there's room, let's just do that, make sure we know what we're talking about. We don't need to, there's room for a whole white group inside there if black plays one further. I won't show the example. Okay, so yes, this is big. But now, let's look at the two stones extension. Is that big? Yeah. Is it bigger? Yeah. So, there's the one stone extension. The corner's not points, and the extension is not points. With the Shamari, the corner is points, and the extension is near points. Much bigger. Okay. So because of that, the triangle area is bigger than the circle area. So this means that A is the bigger area and B is the smaller area. One last perspective. Oh, wrong button. Just a second. Notice when black pinches, he's extending from Shamari, attacking white, playing in the biggest area. It's a pretty big move. Okay. So, A is bigger than B. So I'm having this, I present this to Feng Young, second ever woman to get to professional nine done. I asked her once, said, how do you feel about being the second woman ever? She says, oh, I'm very proud of that. <laughs> I also asked her once, when you play a game, do you expect to win? I mean, you're playing, you probably win half your games like everyone else. W what are your expectations? She says, oh, I, I expect to win every game I play. I hate it. I hate it when I lose a game. Absolutely hate it. So I just thought that was interesting. Okay. So I present this. And she says, because she played here. I said, now, I know this is a great move and plenty big enough, but can we agree that A is bigger? No, no, no. B's, this one's just fine. I said, yes, I know this one's just fine. 
but isn't this one bigger? No, no, no. This one's just fine. Yes, I understand this one's just fine. No problems at all. But isn't this one bigger? Well, of course this one's bigger, but that doesn't matter. So you see this point I'm bringing up of how professionals think is there's a perspective that's important, that is the most important, that they're both big enough. And when I go in the, into the details, it's hard for them to follow because they don't think that way. That's not the way they, they think about things. Okay. Was there anything else I wanted to share about that? I've talked with <clears throat> so many professionals over the years. Remember, I've been playing Go since 1970. And uh, I got to six on and started teaching professionally at 1983, four, maybe five. So I've been teaching nearly 40 years uh, and just had so I, I feel such a rich history being able to play with so many professionals and, and talk with them. And, um, and since this video is much about nothing really, it's not really about anything other than stuff. So let's keep talking about stuff. Okay. <clears throat> the first game I ever played against a professional. Back, I was 1Q at the time. Uh, and Karuo Iwamoto, he played in the Atom Bomb game. I wonder if you guys know about the Atom Bomb game. We'll just, this, we're doing stories here, so I'll just finish my story. Uh, <clears throat> the day they're going to drop the bomb on Nagasaki, I think it was, the Go game, the Hanimbo, is scheduled to play in that city. And for some reason, they said, well, let's play outside the city at this other place. Great, sounds good. So here they are playing the Hanimbo, and in the middle of the game, all of a sudden, there's this massive explosion. The glass breaks out. <clears throat> the board gets stumbled. The stones go everywhere. Everyone gets up, runs to the window, and they see the big mushroom cloud. Then they go back, put the board the way it was, and continue the game, which is amazing on a lot of levels. That board and that position is at the Nihon Kion in Japan in a glass case. All very interesting. So he's a great guy. He was the first one to leave Japan. Back then, China didn't really play Go Korea. I, this is not accurate, but they had never heard of the game. I mean, they weren't at all well known. For bad, No one had ever heard of Baduk before. No one had hardly heard of Wei Qi before. Okay, so we're going back some time. So he was touring, and we're like, oh, my God, a professional nine don coming to San Francisco. We can't believe it. So uh, I expected to take nine stones, but being a simul, I got seven. With the two-stone reduction, I was still completely confident. Now, I mean that literally. I had zero doubt that I would win this game. Yes, I'm only one Q, but I felt that I knew enough about Go. So, <clears throat> this is the start. Black, white, or rather white, black, white, black, white. At this point, I knew if I run away, I'm going to lose the game. There's no doubt in my mind. Because I don't know, he's, I'm doing what he wants me to do. So instead, I played here. This is not a great move. It's 80%, which is pretty good for a 1Q. 
this is a lot better. But I'm thinking, no, 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 you ain't coming in on me, buddy. And we continue the game. And there's eventually a white group, which I start chasing. And I chase it in, and I chase it in, and I chase it in, and naturally save my stone, and eventually win the game. <clears throat> One last part of this story. This is Simul. There's a dozen, I think maybe more than a dozen, just a little bit more. Let's say a dozen players. <clears throat> And he's going around the room, right? He goes around, he gets to the board, doesn't take long, puts the stone down, goes to the next board. Okay, Simon. We get to end game. I count up, I'm 35 points ahead. Totally confident. He's coming around to the, mark, to the board. He doesn't look at me, he doesn't look at the board, he walks right past. I'm like, that's a bit disorienting. So I just, you know, stay calm, goes around, comes back again. Doesn't look at me, doesn't look at the board, just walks by. Okay, this is getting to me. My heart's starting to pump. I'm like, okay, what's what's going on? Goes around a third time, doesn't look at me, doesn't look at the board, just walks past. Okay, I start breathing. Said, if I, I'm about to lose focus and lose the game. Calm down, just breathe, and I'm breathing. Remember, I close my eyes, and I'm breathing, trying to stay calm. Comes around the fourth time, stops, put his hands behind his back, and looks at the board. He spends the longest time he'd spend on any board at any time in that simul. He finally starts playing again. <clears throat> he took my 35-point lead down to seven. From that day on, my I realized how important in-game was, and my in-game stored after that, because I realized that's an important part of the game. I mean, significantly so. <clears throat> and then for the rest of my 1Q days, I'm like, I don't mind being 20 points behind, because my position's better, and I have in-game. He doesn't. So just five points here, five points there, and just rack them up and win easily. Okay, I think that's it. Thanks for uh, watching, and we'll catch you all later. Bye.